Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TJ, and I'm starting this episode off with some more weird news. MLB The Show, what are they doing here? Brad Hand gets traded once again. Bruh. I mean, it's just ridiculous at this point. He gets traded to the White Sox for Ronaldo Lopez, and another questionable MLB The Show 19 trade logic, whatever you want to call it. So we do end up moving in the month of April and we move on and end up actually finishing the month pretty strong. And we finished 21 and 11 here in year 2021. And just looking at our May schedule, we have Texas to start out and we are gonna go up against them since it is probably our rival in the division right now because they did win it. And it seems like they are probably the most equipped to be the strongest in the future. Corey Kluber off to a good start. 6 0, 112 whip, 51 strikeouts to 16 walks. Only giving up three home runs and 12 earned runs. That's pretty good. And look at Yusei Kikuchi. He's only given up nine earned runs, 47 strikeouts to 10 walks. And he's 3 1 in three starts. I like what I see from him. He's got a one whip, too. I believe that's our best whip of any starter so far. As you just look at Carlos Rodon, for example, he's not having the greatest of starts but he has time to kind of right the ship here marco gonzalez 108 whip helixon 141 whip but he's four and one and then in our minor league system you know we have a couple of good guys kyle or cliff fisher who we did draft in last year's draft he's off to a pretty good start he doesn't have the wins to go with it but he's got a low whip and that's what you want to see out of young guys so we are going up against texas and they have tyler anderson on the mound the lefty and we'll just take a look at the standings. We are on a five game win streak, seven and three in our last 10. We are about three games up on the Rangers. So let's create some distance here with this two game set as we move into the month of May. So Jer Jeremy Hellickson on the mound. Remember we did sign him last off season. Once he, you know, we traded for him before the, after the trade deadline actually. And then we ended up, you know, liking him and re-signing him. I, I'm, I think it was a really good signing. So looking at the Texas Rangers lineup, not too much has changed. They had, do have Didi Gregorius now at shortstop. So that's a little bit of a change. They have Ozuna, who they did pick up. I believe in our first season they picked him up. And uh, he is going to be starting for them in left field. So here is Justin Turner starting out this game here in the second inning with the bullet up the middle. And that's a diving miss that time from the center fielder. Now up comes Domingo Santana, hitting 345 to start this young season. He's actually hitting pretty well. And maybe the platoon is best for him because him being an everyday player last year, it pretty much hurt our team. And look at Wellington Castillo coming up to the plate. He's going to blast one deep. And that's gone. Wellington Castillo coming through. I mean, this guy, we signed him in the off season and he just hasn't hit the ball well but now he hits the ball on a missile that time and that one is out of here making it two nothing but Alex Smith does get us out of that second inning with a strikeout so let's show some Hellickson on the mound facing Texas they got a good lineup there is actually JT Remuto who they have at catcher now he strikes out on a pitch right down the middle and then Odor strikes out so two early strikeouts here for Hellickson as we move into the bottom of the third. Didi Gregorius at the plate. He's going to swing and miss as well as he is hitting in the eight hole for them. And up comes Escobar. Can we make it four in the first three innings? We can. He's going to swing and miss as Hellickson is off to a good start in this one. So let's move on to the top of the fourth inning. Here is Justin Turner back at the plate. He's going to walk to start it out. Up comes Domingo who gets a hit. He's going to hit that one to left field, and that one is going to be a single. So now guys on first and second here, no outs in the inning. Marvin Gonzalez up to the plate, who's been one of our hottest hitters. He's going to hit a ground ball, but that's a easy double play to Didi Gregorius, and that makes it two outs in the inning as that brings up our next batter, Wellington Castillo, who went deep earlier. Can he do it again here? 2-2 two, two count, two outs. He does hit one to left field, and that one was actually out of the zone. And he somehow gets some wood on that one and gets the hit. And it's 3 0 here in the fourth inning. Up comes Malik Smith. He's hitting one to left field, and that one is going to drop in front of Zach Granite. And Wellington Castillo is going to think twice after only having one speed. And he's no speed demon at all. So that brings up JP with two outs. He's getting hit in the back. 
So now, bases loaded. Tim Beckham, who we want up in this situation. He gets a pitch to hit, and he's going to hit a fly ball. He barely missed that one. That one was almost right down the middle. But Texas does get out of that inning in a bases loaded jam. So let's move this on to the bottom of the fourth inning. Hellickson still dealing on the mound as he strikes out Zach Granite. Now Tommy LaStella comes up. He doesn't make contact, and the Texas Rangers are hitless through four innings. Let's move on to the fifth. Joey Gallo, he gets walked. So now they got a runner on first base here with JT Remuto hitting really well to start the season, but he hits a hard one to first base. And that's a tailor-made double play. Justin Turner fields it nicely in turns two as we are playing pretty well in this game. And here is Ronan Odor up to the play with two outs, and he's going to hit a tapper. So now we're through five innings in Texas has yet to get a hit. So now we move this one on to the later innings in the bottom of the six. Gregorius up at the plate, hitting in the eight hole. He's gonna strike out, still hitless, through six and two quarters. Can we get it to seven? We can't. Here's Escobar up at the plate, he walks. Zach Granite, 0 for two, with two outs. He's gonna hit a ground ball and that's gonna be fielded. And now we get through six. I meant five and two thirds, not six. So now we're on to the later innings here in the eighth inning. Up comes Marwin Gonzalez with one out, one two count. He's gonna hit one to left field and that's a base hit here with one out to start out the eighth inning as we try to give us some insurance runs late in the game. Wellington Castillo at the play. He's three for three in this game. He is going to walk on that one. So guys on first and second. Malik Smith at the plate. He's going to hit a hard one. Two second base. Odor is going to feel that one. But Malik Smith is going to beat out the double play. So now we got guys on the corners here with J.P. Crawford at the plate. 2 1 count. He gets a low pitch. He's going to hit a fly ball to left field. And it's going to drop right in front of Marcelo Zuna. And he doesn't even go after the ball. And Zach Granite fields it. And Malik Smith makes it to third base. So that's a double for J.P. Crawford. So the next batter comes up and they decide to intentionally walk to force a force out at any base. So now that brings up a good guy in our lineup who has been hitting the ball well, David Freeze. Hitting 350 to start this season. Bases loaded, 2-1 count. He's going to go to opposite field and get that one to right field. And the right fielder does come up throwing. And that's going to be another run scored here late in the game in the top of the eighth as they bring in Casey Levine out of the bullpen. And look at that average. I mean, left-handers are hitting over 400, right-handers hitting over three. And that brings up Paul DeYoung. Bases loaded, three, two count, two outs, and he just crushes that pitch. That's not coming back. Paul DeYoung pretty much opens this game wide open. It's nine nothing here in the eighth inning. And what do you expect? Why would they walk Tim Beckham right into Paul DeYoung in the lineup. I mean, that just makes no sense to me, at least. I don't know why you would do it. But then Justin Turner comes up in the eighth inning and he flies out to center, but we make it nine to nothing. So now we move on to the bottom half of the eighth. Here is Odor at the plate. He's gonna strike out once again. Remember, they are still hitless. That's Hellickson's 10th strikeout of this game. Up comes Nomar Mazzara and he's gonna miss. So we go through eight innings of work and no hits given up. And we have 13. Oh, my goodness. We are just crushing the ball this game. I'm glad it's coming against the Rangers because we need to send a message here to the team that we're competing for the top spot for. But we're continuing our hit parade. Here is our man, Marwin Gonzalez, getting a hit to the left center gap. And that is going to be a double here with one out in the ninth inning. Up comes Malik Smith to the plate, 2-2 two -two count. He gets a pitch to hit, and he's taking that one to center field, and that one is going to score a runner. It's 10-0 here on the road for the Seattle Mariners. So now two outs here in the inning. Can J.P. Crawford keep it going? 2-2 two -two count. He does. He keeps it going, hit to left field, and now the top of the lineup comes back up to the plate. This lineup is just dangerous this season. And here is Tim Beckham on a two and one count. They walked him earlier and he gets a pitch to hit. And that one is 
gone. No doubt about that one. Tim Beckham. And wow, what a great, just, I mean, just what a great story this is. I mean, a guy that was picked in the first round in his draft. And really, you know, people had higher expectations for him. But he is living up to that for me. I mean, I can't lie. It's been a treat watching him play for us. And he makes it 13 to nothing. So let's move on to the bottom of the ninth inning. We're three outs away from a no-hitter. Here's Didi Gregorius. He puts a jolt into that one. But Malik Smith has the speed and runs it down in left field. And that's the first out of the inning. We're two outs away from history. Here comes Eduardo Escobar to the plate. 3-2 count. One out, he gets a pitch low in the dirt, and that's gonna be a walk. But now that sets up a potential double play ball, but we're at 109 pitches in the game. Hellickson is gassed at this point, and that brings up Zach Granite here. One to one count, can we get the ground ball? Or a strikeout, and he hits one down Bruh. the line. And that is gonna break up the no-no. We were two outs away from a no-hitter here in this game versus our division rivals. And wow, <laughs> man, we're that close to history. So that brings up Tommy LaStella here with a two and two count. Now guys on first and second, he hits a ground ball to Justin Turner and we're gonna turn a double play. We needed that one batter earlier, but it's all right. But I'm, I'm still kind of mad. I mean, I can't lie, I'm still kind of mad. That was the closest I think I've ever got to a no hitter in MLB The Show. But we go out and win this game, and it's not even close. It's 13 to nothing. And man, what a game from our offense. Well, to Castillo, maybe broke his slump a little bit. Tim Beckham hit the ball well. Paul DeYoung hit a grand slam, and we get the victory in that one. So we go on to quick manage the next game. And just to check it out, we are once again in a hole here in quick manage. I think this year, I've had better luck quick managing games last year, this season. I haven't had too much luck because you can see we're down four nothing and we go on to lose that game. But still, I'm still high off of that 13 to nothing victory versus the Rangers in the first game of that series. But we go on to kind of sim through May and I want to see what we can Bruh. do and we get some bad news. Eddie Zapetta is out for one to two months. I was really looking forward to seeing what he would do in the minors, but now he's got to go on the 60 day injured list and that kind of sucks. So we go on to lose two of, uh, actually we win two of three versus Cleveland. And then we get some more bad news. Enrique Julio tears his MCL for six months. So if you remember Enrique Julio, he was actually our A potential prospect. We drafted in what, like the fifth round last season. Eddie Zepeda, he's one of the bright young stars of our organization as well but I really needed Enrico, Enrique Julio he was hitting actually pretty well at the double a level but I may have wanted to use him as kind of a trade partner just in case I wanted to bolster either our rotation or our lineup later in the season but that's not happening anymore as we move on to 26 and 15 on the season this is a pretty good start as the Rangers are two games back though 24 and 17 and it seems like it's gonna be a two-way race this whole entire season. I don't see the other three teams even competing at this point, but we're off to a good start. I like this team. I like what we have. I don't plan on making any trades or any changes to this team right now because we're just too good to switch it up. Maybe we'll have to move up some guys. And one guy I do wanna keep in mind is our top prospect, Jared Kalenic. If he starts hitting the ball well, he has a chance because you know Sam Perez is struggling to start the season and I want to give the young guy a chance if he is performing up to that level. So that's going to do it here in this episode. Let's see what we can do ending the month of May and going into June next episode. So hit subscribe, hit that like button, stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go.